Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here behind the camera for TFL Off-Road and I am here about two hours outside of Dallas, Texas on a pretty remote ranch with the all new 2024 Kawasaki Mule Pro 1000 lineup. Kawasaki made a lot of changes to this mule for this year. We're gonna have a full ride review coming very soon when I get this out on the trail. But in this video, uh, I just wanted to kind of walk you around these two machines I have in front of me, show you what's new, show you all the features and just kind of dive deep into them a little bit. So I'll tell you what I have in front of me the Pro Mule Pro FXT, which is the one at TFL we're pretty familiar with. This is uh, very similar to the unit we had as a long-term loaner up at the ranch last summer. And then over here, we have the FXR, which is uh, the recreation model of the Mule. The R stands for recreation. It's got slightly bigger tires than the other models, uh, shorter wheelbase, doesn't have the trans cab system, um, but yeah, this was my first time getting some seat time in one of these, and uh, you'll have to stick around for the full video to see the full thoughts on it, but yeah, those are the two that I have in front of me. Missing from this lineup right now is the standard FX, which is the single row version, uh, but not the recreation model, and there's a new HD edition of that... Um, FX model, which uh, gives you some cool things for working around a ranch, like self-leveling suspension and a hydraulic dump bed. Uh, we'll get into that in a second, but first let's just kind of walk around these and I'll tell you everything that's new. Let's start with what's new right here at the engine, because that's the biggest thing. So undo this latch right here. Same thing on the other side. One thing really nice about these mules is how easy it is to get to your engine compartment. You just do those two latches, fold the bottom of the seat cushion out of the way, and then you can pick this whole bed portion up. It is hydraulically assisted with the strut right there. Um, not power assist, but yeah, you got a really easy way to lift it up. Uh, even if you've got stuff in the back, you can use this as a dump bed, and then you have really easy access to your engine compartment. So uh, this is an all new engine from Kawasaki. It's similar to some of the other engines they have in other products, but they said they made a lot of changes to it and it's uh, not set up the same as in any other vehicle. So it is unique to this mule. It's a 999 cc parallel twin. The old one was an 812, so quite a bit more displacement. Kawasaki says that there's a 49% increase in horsepower, a 27% increase in torque, and a 30% increase in top speed, which is all pretty good. They don't put out uh, power numbers officially, but according to published reports, the outgoing mule was right around uh, about 45-ish horsepower, 43 to 45 horsepower. So if I did my math right, this one should be um, somewhere between 65 and 70 horsepower. So quite a bit, quite a big uh, jump in power. And uh, I can tell you that it definitely feels a lot sportier. Like I said, that full video is coming soon, but um, yeah, it definitely feels closer to a sport side-by-side -side, um, than the outgoing mule which is great. Some other noticeable differences. Um, first of all, you have styling. It does look pretty similar to the old one. If you parked them side by side, you could probably pick up some differences, but um, general style is pretty much the same. Uh, this vehicle isn't equipped with it, but one of the big features for 2024 is the self-leveling rear suspension. Again, you can get that on the FX uh, Pro, uh, HD edition or some of the uh, more premium ranch editions. The new self-leveling suspension basically has oil running through the shocks and when you start to drive, um, it'll change the valving and send oil where it needs to go to self-level the rear, which is really cool. So it's not uh, electronic or anything. You don't have any modes or buttons for it. It just kind of works in the background. You never need to think about it. And it's a completely sealed system. So everything that's going on happens within the shock body itself. Um, so it should be sealed from dust and all kinds of debris. So that's one of the, the big features for uh, 2024. 
Another thing they really worked on for 2024 was uh, making things easier to access in the engine compartment. Um, so your dipstick's way easier to get to now, um, which was a big complaint from a lot of people. Your oil filter is now really easy to access by hand, um, and it's downward facing with a little catch pan below it. You can kind of see there. So oil changes, you won't make quite as big of a mess anymore. And they also did a lot of work on the air box. Uh, a lot of customers and dealers were complaining that the air filters would get too dirty. So they totally reworked the air box. They picked up the intake location way up top here it feeds down into the air box down below um, really easy to get to um, your air filter there if you need to replace it or clean it you just basically undo that latch and it's sitting right there for you so yeah they tried to make um, the ownership aspect of the mule a little bit easier for you know either dealers servicing on it or um, if you're a customer that works on your own vehicles uh, they're trying to make all that much easier. The ground clearance and um, suspension travel, all been massively increased. So suspension travel in the front went from 8.7 inches to 11 inches. You gain 2.3 inches of suspension travel in the front, which is pretty good. In the rear, you're up from 8.5 in last year's mule to 10.1, so a 1.6 increase in rear suspension travel. And then ground clearance, um, used to be 10.2 inches, it's now up 1.4 inches to 11.6 inches. So all the way around, get a little more capability, a little more clearance, and out on the trail, I really only touched the underside of this once. So um, yeah, I'm never gonna complain again about more ground clearance, more articulation. And Kawasaki said they were able to do that by moving some of the shock mounting locations. So this chassis, it's very, very similar to the chassis in last year's mule, which is a good thing. That was a very good chassis. Uh, they just had to change some of the mounting locations to accommodate this new engine and also to, yeah, be able to give more suspension travel by changing the shock mount locations. Tow and uh, hauling capacities are the same. So 2,000 pounds of towing, you can do uh, 350 pounds in the bed in this uh, short bed configuration or if you um, convert it to a single row you can do a thousand pounds in the bed and we'll do that in just a second but uh, just a couple other things that were done to increase comfort in this vehicle um, cup holders have always been right here but they added some more down on the floor here so more drink holders for everybody they also um, added a heat shield by the radiator behind the radiator there to keep some uh, some of the hot air off of the passengers and kind of expel it out the wheel wells here so that you don't get so hot while you're riding this around there's a few other things they did for comfort too um, just to make this a little bit easier to live with. If you already own last year's mule, most of those changes aren't gonna be enough to go convince you to buy the new one. Maybe the engine might be, um, but I think for most people, um, those changes are more to get new customers in, not really to replace an old machine that may not have two extra cup holders. So under the hood here, they added this terminal block, which was always available as an option. It's now standard on all the models. So basically that's just an easy place to hook up accessories. If you wanna run speakers or winch or light bars, um, it's easier to do that with that option. And that was something that dealers were asking for and customers were asking for. So that's one of the big things with this uh, new Mule lineup is um, they put a new engine in it, increased performance, increased off-road capability, and then the rest of the changes really were listening to customers and giving them what they wanted, which is really awesome. It's not too often that we see that happen. Uh, one thing I wanna do real quick is just show you how this bed converts because it's so easy to do. I'm holding the camera with my left hand, so I'm gonna do this whole process by myself with my right hand. Uh, first step is to undo these two latches. I already did that because I showed you the engine compartment. So basically you just fold that seat out of the way there. We're gonna push up on these bars, get those out of the way, just like that. And now this entire um, bulkhead piece right here will actually just push forward. And again, I'm doing this one-handed and it's still really easy to do. Just kind of got to dance back and forth a little bit if you don't have both hands. But just like that, 
get it all extended, make sure that is straight. And now you push these bars down, this hooks under this loop right here, and then you redo your latch on the other side. Shut the door. Alex, I'm gonna bomb this real quick. Just so yeah. you know, one man, one time around, one minute is all it takes. Exactly, that's what I'm showing right now. It's so easy. Thanks, Tom. Yep. And there you go. Last latch right here. And I just did that whole thing one-handed while having a conversation and holding a camera and trying to make a video at the same time, and it was still pretty quick. Uh, I've tested a lot of these convertible systems, uh, convertible bed setups on side-by-sides. This by far is the easiest and most mindless to use. So yeah, really impressed with that. Of course, the FXR doesn't have that because you're kind of locked into uh, this bed configuration. You only have one row of seats, but you still do have the latches because this still has a dumping bed. So. Yeah, really impressive machines here. Um, like I said, full review is coming soon. Um, driving impressions aren't embargoed or anything, so I can tell you that uh, it feels like the mule I know and love, but sportier and faster, and uh, that is just pretty awesome. Still built in the USA in Lincoln, Nebraska. Still comes with a three-year warranty, and actually, I did a factory tour where these are built in Lincoln a few months ago, so if you wanna see these mules rolling down the assembly line and see how they're all put together, definitely go check that video out. Um, as far as pricing goes, uh, the FXT that you see right here, which is kind of the, I think the most popular one, what most people go for, starts at $20,299. Uh, the FXR over here starts at $16,599. And uh, then the FX HD edition that I mentioned is $18,299. And of course, there's different trims uh, for all of these different packages you can put on all of them, cab enclosures, winches, all kinds of stuff. So uh, the price is really what you make it, but those are the base prices what they start at. So there you go. Let me know if you have any questions on these machines down in the comments below. Really excited to get these out on the trail and uh, yeah, keep riding them the rest of the day and then show you what they're all about. That video is coming very soon. But for now, I just wanted to kind of walk you through all the changes, mostly the engine. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Check out alltfl.com so you don't miss anything. I'll catch you in the next video.